Gentlemen and lady, you are live. Good morning, welcome to Cath Lab 6. I'd like to introduce my colleagues, Dr. Jim Beninati, who you all know well, and Dr. Carrie Campbell. Carrie, let's go ahead and present the case. Today we have, uh, good morning. Today we have a left ventricular pseudoaneurysm related to a bioprosthetic mitral valve. Next slide. Here are disclosures. Next slide. This is a 72 year old woman who first presented October 2007 with MRSA endocarditis, severe mitral regurg, and cardiogenic shock. She subsequently went and underwent mitral valve replacement later that month. Next slide. Past medical history is significant for hypertension, hypercholesterolemia, and two heart attacks. Surgical history includes extensive cardiac catheterization with multiple stent placements, sternotomy, and the mitral valve re replacement. Social history, she was a previous smoker but has since stopped. So she had an angiogram that was performed for, for fatigue and chest heaviness. It revealed an infrabasilar uh, ventricular aneurysm, pseudoaneurysm as seen here. You see three valve struts just adjacent to the pseudoaneurysm, which is marked by arrows. Next slide. We have an echocardiogram showing the mitral valve struts. In addition, there's a pseudoaneurysm neck just adjacent one of the struts. Next slide. This is a picture of the bioprosthetic mitral valve so that you can appreciate what the struts' uh, appearance are. Next slide. Here's the uh, first treatment, which was a closure with a 1210 Amplatz or PDA device. First image in the upper left shows the uh, pseudoaneurysm and subsequent access. Next slide. We then have placement of the ductal occluder. There's a cartoon in the upper right-hand corner. Next slide. Follow-up ultrasound revealed residual pseudoaneurysm neck post-ductal occluder component. You see in the left-hand slide, there's a pseudoaneurysm on the left with the ductal occluder just next to that, and just next to that is the mitral valve strut. We do see a two millimeter pseudoaneurysm neck that was residual and was thought to close at that time. Next slide. Four months later, however, we received a CTA that showed the persistent pseudoaneurysm. Next slide. Today, the treatment plan is possible embolization through the occluder device that has already been placed and possible need for a second occluder. Okay, Carrie, that, that was great. Just a little bit of uh, further history. Uh, the patient had her mitral valve surgery in Long Island, and I sent the angiogram, the left ventriculogram and MR, to the surgeon who's the chief of cardiac surgery at Long Island Jewish. And we spoke on the telephone, and he told me that this was one of the most difficult, if not difficult, uh, cardiac surgeries. He had to leave part of the mitral apparatus in place. It was so heavily calcified that he thought he would um, tear the heart. He said he would not take her back to close the pseudoaneurysm. He felt he would hurt her more than help her. And that's why we closed this, or tried to close it, with the ductal device months ago. And I thought that that small residual leak would endothelialize and close, but unfortunately, the CT uh, cardiac CT shows it is not. Um, that's where we are. Um, on the, uh, the panel, any thoughts here about do you even need to clue, close an LV pseudoaneurysm? Um, any other thoughts about techniques? And then we'll show you what we've done so far today. Uh, Jonathan, yeah, it's a great case. We have a, a, a great group of uh, experts here. Uh, Horace, you have a lot of experience with this uh, kind of problem. What's your opinion? Regarding the, the technique, I think it would be very difficult to puncture that device after that time period. So it may be easier to go uh, side by side of the device and then put a second device in. You should, you should obtain some, some images so we can really see the opening from Excellent. the aneurysm to the LV. Let me have uh, Dr. Rafael Machado show our present TEE images. Ralph, do you want to go ahead and um, sure. let's see where we are today? Sure. Are we displaying the uh, TEE? Uh, this, is, uh, this is the device, just to give you an orientation here, this is the uh, uh, mitral annulus where, where my arrow is, the device is here. This is the uh, left ventricular pseudoaneurysm, you, aneurysm. you can clearly see flow around the device into the pseudoaneurysm between the, uh, uh, the device and the lateral mitral annulus. Uh, we took a 3D image, uh, and again, this is, appears to be the defect here. Uh, the, you can see the sutures of the... Of, of the uh, of the valve okay. uh, and the device. And again, we're looking at it from the perspective of the uh, left ventricular pseudoaneurysm. Uh, and uh, a still here, the, no, that's the symptom, sorry. Again, just to give you some orientation, here's the, the, the valve 
uh, the valve annulus and the device and pseudoaneurysm. Uh, we think that the, 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 the residual defect is at, at, the, at the arrow. Good. Can we just start on the uh, city runs? Can we go to run number one and just loop through them all? Let's go to run number one, please. And just let them all loop. Next. So we have a guiding catheter, used a typical mother and child technique to, to use a diagnostic, a little gentler to get around the valve. You see we're right on the PDA occluder. Yesterday we tried bench testing to get through a, a device and it's quite difficult. And uh, our plan A here was to try to get around it as was suggested. But if we thought if we could not, um, it, this has been very, very difficult. Uh, I started off with a nine French JR4 guiding catheter kind of didn't give us the orientation. We switched out to an IM guide that sits us right where we think we need to be. And it's been a lot of probing, and we've been using